Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Can you hear me now? Welcome back to my channel. We're trying something new today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brooke. This is a channel where I talk about houseplant things and DIY houseplants and whatever else. And so welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a mic. I don't know how far to hold this. And of course the dog one's coming. Don't know how far to hold it. But one of the things, one of the things that bugs me is that I feel like the mic on my camera sucks. So we're trying this out. If it fails, sorry guys, thank you for watching anyways. But here we go. Today, I wanted to talk about pests because spring is here and I have already noticed that the fungus gnats have returned. I made it a year and a half, people, year and a half without a fungus gnat issue and now they're here and it's bothering me. Now I did find the problem child and I actually threw it away. If you saw my latest Instagram reel, you will know that a fuzzy petiole was the culprit and it was causing so many issues and I just gave up on it and threw it out. So that has kind of solved an issue. So we will talk about that. But I thought we would talk about it because pests are heightened in the springtime, mealybugs, um, scale, rips, all of that fungus gnats come into play because you're watering your plants more. And so fungus gnat issues can come into a play. How many times am I going to say play? But anyways, it all, they all just come up at the same time. So I wanted to kind of go through each one a little bit and give my experience and kind of help navigate the signs, how to treat it, and all of that. I'll start with the most simplistic one, which is fungus gnats. Fungus gnats, believe it or not, they are a, they're a product of your watering issue. Fungus gnats come into play when you are overwatering your plants. It creates that stagnant, moist environment that your roots start rotting and the fungus gnats go after that. So they're going to eat away at those rotting roots and they will multiply quickly. You can use the yellow sticky traps that you see people put in their plants. Um, you can use carnivorous plants and then you can use systematic granules or you can use something like mosquito bits. So let's talk about those a little bit and I'll tell you what I use. I have used in the past sticking traps um, carnivorous plants and mosquito bits. I stick away from the systematic granules because it will make your entire plant very toxic. Not that every plant in here basically is toxic already, but it will make your non-toxic plants toxic and it's just not good for children, pets, anything like that. So it makes me nervous. So I just stay clear of it. You can do your own research on it. I have used the sticky traps. The sticky traps are only going to catch the adult flies. They are not going to do, do anything about the larva that is in your plants, really dog, in your plant soil. So yes, it might make you feel good that it's catching a bunch of these little gnats, but you're not going to do anything for the problem because they're still going to be in your soil and you need to do something about that. You can use the sticky traps to catch the adult flies. Sure, it will help with that, you know, helping them lay, not lay eggs, but the eggs are still there. So they're going to hatch and it's going to be a cycle and it's an issue. So the carnivorous plants are the same way. You can get the carnivorous plants. I have one actually right now. It's a pitcher plant. It is back here, right here. And I bought this more because it's fun for my son. He liked it. He thought it was fun. It has caught a few fungus gnats on it, I see. Um, and they are helpful in that case. Again, it's just like the yellow sticky traps. They will catch the adult flies, but they are not going to do anything about your problem that is actually laying within the soil. So also carnivorous plants are bog plants. So you need to make sure that you're using filtered water and that they are constantly moist. So I have mine in a little reservoir. Maybe I'll just pull it out. I have mine in this little reservoir right here. And so when that gets, you know, halfway down more, I will fill it back up about here and then it will continue to stay moist on top. Now I put this too close to one of my grow lights at first and it burned the top of it, but it's okay because it's pushing out a bunch of new growth right there. Um, now, again, these guys are bogs, so they need to constantly be in water. I have used um, filtered water just to be safe because they kind of are a more like 
sensitive plant. Um, I have also had pings, I think is what they're called. They look more like a succulent and those hot fungus gnats constantly. Um, it was a really great plant, like carnivorous plant to have, and I really enjoyed them. Um, they're just a fun plant. They do bloom. It's precious. They're little tiny blooms. So that's fun. I have also had a sundew, I believe is what it's called. It's like a longer one that has little sticky things at the top of its branches, branches, petioles, whatever stems you want to call them. And again, those both stayed in water constantly. I did not let them dry out because they would not enjoy it and it would probably die quickly. That's that. You can buy these. They're just going to, you know, help you catch the mother flies and deal with that problem. Otherwise, they look kind of fun. They are fun, but they're, again, not going to help you with the issue inside of your soil. Blue past those because really none of those are going to help your situation if you are dealing with a large fungus gnat issue. Now you can also throw away your plant if you, like I did, if you feel like it's too much, the plant isn't worth it, um, just toss it. I did that. Mine, I chopped the plant entirely back. It was already causing issues. I was over it. I threw it out. Now you can also repot the plant, but if you consistently get fungus gnats in that plant, number one, you need to check your water and you're watering way too often. It does not need to be watered that much. Cut it back. That will cut your problem down. If all else fails and you really don't want to do anything else, you can repot the plant. But again, if you don't have your watering un under control, it's just going to continue to happen. Let's move on to what I actually do to eradicate the situation, because that is what you want to do. You want to kill all of the larva that is in your soil. Everything else is kind of just a helps you manage. What you need to do is you actually need to kill the source. So in, what I do is I use mosquito bits. So mosquito bits are used for outside mosquitoes and bugs. You put them in your like standing water that, you know, attracts all of those bugs, put these in it and it kills them off. This is non-toxic to your animal wildlife outside, like the birds, because you can put it in your bird bed baths, beds, bird baths, in your ponds and stuff like that. So that is why I like these. It is safe because it also says that you can use these in animal troughs and all of that. That tells me that these are okay. I'm not, not that I want them like eating these or whatever, but it's okay to pour this into my plants and I know that it's going to be safe. I have been using this for years now. And when I wasn't having any fungus gnat issues, I was using this consistently. So that's the great news about this too. You can use it in every water. Um, it's not going to harm your plants or kill them off or anything. It's not like a fertilizer where you use too much. It's, it's gonna damage them. So what I do, is I take this and I take a mesh bag and I take boiling hot water and I make a brew out of this. So on the bag, this says to use four tablespoons per one gallon of water and let it soak for 30 minutes. But Ashley Anita from, I don't remember her channel, I'm so sorry, but her name is Ashley Anita. You can search her on YouTube. She years ago made a video where she said the key was getting boiling hot like hot water and making tea out of it so that it really extracts all of that good stuff that kills the fungus gnats out and into the water so that is what i do i make a boiling teapot of mosquito bits please don't go pouring the boiling hot water after 30 minutes on your plants let it cool down but once you do let it cool down you want to pour this in just like with your normal watering saturating the entire soil or bottom watering i have used it both way and had success um so you want to do that make sure that your plant needs water okay don't go doing this i understand like you want to get rid of the fungus gnats the fungus gnats are a priority but don't go over watering your plant with this in order to get rid of the fungus gnats first let your soil dry out Try to deal with the fungus gnats, buy some sticky traps to just alleviate the issue of fl them flying around for a moment. Let your soil dry out, then use the mosquito bits. That is what I use for mosquitoes or for fungus gnats, sorry, is mosquito bits. And I have used this again for years and usually one, after one time watering this in, I don't see another one. And so it can be kind of a pain because you do have to wait 30 minutes and you have to boil the water or get hot, super hot water, whatever. But to me, it's worth it um, because it really does cut the fungus gnats down and 
it is a safer method of doing that. So that is for fungus nets. That's what I do. It's nothing fancy. I have tried cinnamon. I have tried the alcohol or rubbing alcohol, you know, pouring that hydrogen peroxide in. I don't think it works. That's my personal opinion. Other people out there are probably like, it does work. That is great. If it's working for you, stick with it. But this is what's working for me. I've tried all those other things and I'm sticking with it. Moving on, thrips, scale, mealy bugs. I know white flies are an issue, but I've dealt with them. So if somebody has, they can put that, uh, that in the comments. I'd be interested to hear what those are like. But thrips are a pest that I have dealt with the most. A couple of years ago, I had our windows open. We lived in Washington State. And if you didn't know, Washington State, 90% of the houses don't have air conditioning. It's real fun. So one summer, it was extremely hot inside. We opened the windows. And of course, by doing that, bugs can fly in. I know that there's that netting on the outside of the window, but they can still squeeze in. And that's how a lot of them get in through you opening the doors, the windows, your pets, gardening. If you have gardened and you are working in it and then you come in, you can bring it in with you. So anyways, I saw what I thought was a thrip. I'd never experienced thrips or pests like that before. Come in and fly right next to my Monstera. And I thought to myself, that looks like a thrip. Did I do anything about it? No, I just let it go. Sure enough, it was a thrip. I should have killed it on contact, but no, I just let it infest my Monstera. It infested my jungle boogie, my thematophyllum. They move quickly, <laughs> I found, and they're hard to spot. You cannot see these the way that you can see mealybugs and scale sometimes. The thrips are visible when they start to become adults, but the larva is really what's doing the, the damage. They're eating your sap in the leaves and your stems and basically the entire plant. And they're just eating away at it. And you don't notice it unless you look really hard like a magnifying glass or you are just paying special attention to the plants. So I let it go and I started to notice that the new growth that was coming out on my Monstera was discolored. And that is a high sign that you have a pest infestation. Then I started to notice that my jungle boogie really was having a difficult time with its new foliage and coming out discolored. So I will show you what that looks like because I did cut off some of the leaves. So that's important to know if you have a thrips infestation and it's pretty bad, cut the foliage off. It'll always grow back. So I would just cut it off, be done with that leaf and get you know, some of that infestation out of the way and then deal with the rest. So what I started to notice on my jungle boogie is the foliage coming out odd. So like this leaf here, you see all this discoloring. Okay, so first of all, these little dots are actual nectar floral, floral, mm -hmm. I forgot the word. Anyways, that's what these are. These are not pests. Um, I actually, my husband's like, oh, you have a pest infest infestation every time he sees it. It's not just extra nectar floralies florals floralies i don't know i'm gonna put the word here it's something else it's it, the plant is excreting it i think um when it gets in a high light i had this guy sitting in a southwest facing window and all of the new foliage started to come out like this you can see here like they all have these little dots on them and then i moved it back uh quite a bit and put it basically like in it no it wasn't an east facing window and all of the new foliage came out clean, didn't have any of it. So I feel like that's a stress, or that's my plant telling me that it's stressed out or something. I could be wrong, haven't done research, but I do know that that's what that is. Moving on. So I started noticing that, noticing that around the tips, like all of that color is gone. This guy, look at that. It has this coppery tone to it and it's see-through. If you were to see it in person, like I can see through this leaf, it's very glassy. So that, is a sign of thrips. The thrips are eating that sap and it's eating the color. That's basically what I think of. It's eating the color out of the leaf. And so they cause extreme damage in a very short time. They also get the petioles. So I have um, my Escaletto, my Monstera Escaletto just got thrips or is in, you know, had thrips and I just noticed it. 
and it ate the petiole, like where the new leaf forms right by it, just ate down that, I'll show a video of it. And it's extremely discolored. So I knew that something was wrong with the plant, but I couldn't tell exactly what. And then I saw that, like it got worse. I was like, okay, it's thrips. I know it's thrips. But that's what thrips is going to look like. They're also going to be visible again um, as they be mature and become adults underneath your leaves and on the petioles. Uh, I haven't had them too much on top of the leaves. I know they can be, but where I have found them is like right here along this um, veining in the leaf. And they just like to hide under there and eat away. And so when that issue arises, I one, cut the plant's leaves. If I if it's a extreme infestation, I cut it back because there's no use in that. And then I spray the entire plant down just with water, just spray it off. I turn the plant over, like I, I do. I turn the plant over upside down a little bit. I spray underneath the leaves, spray on top of the leaves. And then I use Jack's Dead Bug Brew. So again, you can go the systematic granules route and it will kill thrips and mealybugs, not spider mites. And I don't know if it kills scale, but it will kill thrips. But what I use is this Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It is organic. Again, it's for organic gardening. So that means that it's not going to harm your plants that you are growing and make them toxic. This is what I use. I spray the entire plant down once I have cleaned it top to bottom, bottom of the leaves, top of the leaves, down the petioles, in the soil, like on top. I don't think they're going to be there, but I just spray the entire plant to be on the safe side. And I continue doing that until I feel like, okay, I, I'm confident that they're gone. I haven't seen any of the bugs. Um, the new leaves are coming out clean. Like I knew I had eradicated the thrips on this when the new foliage was coming out clear and not having any of these like weird, oh, sorry, weird like, you know, discoloration. I knew that the thrips were gone because that's what they like the most is like new leaves unfurling because they're really like sappy and fresh. Um, so I knew that that had been eradicated. So you can know that way. Again, if you visibly saw them um, on your plant, then you will know that they're gone when you don't visibly see them anymore. I do that probably for three weeks or so just to be on the safe side. I just spray it all down um, and I can do that once a week. Now, the thing with the Jack's Dead Bug Brew, uh, I believe that you are supposed to wipe it off of your leaves once you have sprayed it on, but I don't. I just leave it. I don't, would, however, put the plant back under the grow light or by a high light window until it's fully dry because it will burn your plant. I learned that the hard way. I tried to eradicate that on my thematophyllum and I had it in a southwest facing window. I just left it there and it burned the leaves. Just wait until it dries completely on the plant before you place it back in its like grow light spot or highlight spot. So that is thrips. That is what I have done and used. Um, I would also suggest like, you know, isolating the plant that has thrips and making sure that you are using this and spraying down all the other plants in the area. Now you can also use this as a preventative. So you could go through, I went through last week once I found my Monstera Escaletto had thrips and sprayed all the plants in this room. Even though the Escaletto was not in this room, um, it was actually on the complete opposite side of the house. I just want to be safe. And these plants, you know, in here, they're all bunched together and close. So I, I want to make sure that there's no issues there and just getting ahead of the problem the possible problem. So I do just spray my plants with this. Um, again, you can do that once a week. I think you can do it more times a week if you absolutely want, but I would just stick to once a week for at least three weeks um, on your infested pet, uh, plant until you see signs that there are no more pests. Now that we're talking about pests, I see my dog and a piece of dirt and it freaked me out. Pests that are also common that I have not had much experience with are spider mites, um, scale, and mealybugs. Mealybugs are actually pretty easy to spot. They are white, fuzzy little things that are going to be all over your plant. Like they are going to be in packs. And they do move. You can see them move. 
and they eat again the sap of your plant. All of these pests are attracted to the sap sap of your plants. So that is why they eat the leafy goodness. So mealy bugs, um, I have not seen the damage per se from them. I know that they slow down your growth and you're again you're gonna notice by your new plants leaves coming out, they will be different. They will not be perfect or they will not be um, like they should, they'll be deformed or discolored. That is a, again, a pest problem. So mealybugs um, I know are really um, prominent, I guess, or attracted to specifically like Hoya compacta. They love those nooks and crannies. Um, I think that they like like moldy areas, which is gross, or mildew areas, you know, just those really damp spots that are on your plants. So I think that's why it likes the Hoya compacta is because it can hide in all of those nooks and crannies of those plants and you won't see it. <laughs> you won't see it until it's overtaken your plant and then it's done. Because the one thing I have learned about mealybugs is they're extremely difficult, at least for me, to get rid of. You need to basically <laughs> It's it's really obnoxious. But to get rid of them, you need to take alcohol, like rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip and wipe them off, you know, one by one. You can spray them off, but I have found that they stick way better than thrips or any other, not, not scale, scale sticks really well, but they stick to your plant very well. They like suction onto that thing. And it's very difficult to even get them off with water. So spraying down your plant is great, but if you have you know, a lot of them and you're seeing them, you're going to need to take some alcohol, rubbing alcohol and get them off, you know, manually. Now I have only dealt with mealybug and scale once. It was on a plant that a friend had gotten and noticed that it had spider mites. And then it came into my care because I was like, okay, I'll get, I'll, you know, try to deal with the issue. It was a birds of paradise and I got rid of the spider mites and then it got mealybugs. And that was really obnoxious because they, the way that a birds of paradise, a paradise works, you know, it's really close together and compact. And then it spreads out like this with each new leaf coming out the center. And so it, that fan that it creates, creates really like divot, or really divots, divots that those mealybugs just crawl into and stay and you don't see them. And so I noticed that the new growth coming out was really small and disformed and discolored and had a lot of issues. And I noticed all of these little white specks that were popping up on the plant. And I'm like, oh, this is an issue. It's mealybugs. And so I did, I took alcohol, you know, in a Q-tip and wiped them all off. I sprayed down the plant. I used Jack's Dead Bug Brew and that actually did eradicate the issue. But then the plant got scale. It was like a never ending thing with this plant. So then it got scale and I cut the plant at that point. I cut the branches off. I was over it. It had mealybugs. That's obnoxious. Then it had scale and scale to me is the hardest to get rid of. They have an outer covering and again, they like your sap. They have the outer covering and it protects them. And it, a spray a hose is not going to get it off. You have got to scrape them off. And so at that point, it kind of just became not worth it to me because I did try to scrape off the scale that I saw, but at that rate of it just populating and then it got mealybugs again, like that plant just wanted to die and I, I let it die. I, I threw it away because it was too much. So those two like mealybugs and scale, I know that alcohol, you rubbing alcohol and taking a Q-tip to them gets them off. But at that rate, I don't know what completely eradicates them. I assume systematic granules, if you really wanted to keep that plant, is the only way you could go and treat that issue. If you are experiencing one of those two, scale or mealybugs, use the systematic granules. I would suggest if you want to keep the plant. Otherwise, you can try to manage it by, you know, picking every single one of them off and cleaning the plant really well and spraying the Jack's Dead Bug Brew. But it could be a reoccurring issue that might not be worth it. And so again, systematic granules at that point might be your best friend and your best hope. So those two, again, I don't really have much experience with. 
great news about those two is you can see them more. You can see them probably quicker, their actual physical bodies, um, rather than just seeing damage and wondering what it is. Let's move to spider mites, because again, I don't really have much on those two, but spider mites are common. They are common on Alocasia and Calathea specifically. And funny enough, I have not had them on either. I have had a lot of Alocasia and Calathea and spider mites haven't attacked them, which is very surprising. I don't know why, but they have attacked my Monstera adansonii. So I am not particularly fond of this plant because every time I have had it, it has gotten spider mites and I'm not sure what it is about that plant, but it really loves being consumed and eaten by spider mites. So Spider mites, you again, wash your plant off completely and I spray the Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Now for spider mites, if you're using systematic granules, you actually can't use that. It will make them populate more and create an army of them quicker, I've heard. So don't use that for spider mites. But I have used Jack's Dead Bug Brew. I have found though that with spider mites, they just come back. So I am not 100% sure how to eradicate them completely. I threw the plant away because I was tired of spider mites and I've seen a lot of people do that. Um, spider mites, you will see them. They are a lot smaller than a normal spider, number one, and their webs are a lot finer. So if you are finding one or two spider webs on your plant, that is most likely just a spider, a common spider, house spider, whatever. If you are finding like thousands of little like inner webbings all over your plant, and it has engulfed it kind of, or engulfed the specific, like one specific leaf, that is a spider mite issue. And you will see them, they're really tiny little white things, speckles, it looks like little splatters of paint on your plant, like just all over. That is spider mites. And you want to treat that quickly because again, they will eat your sap and they multiply very fast and they're very obnoxious to deal with. So I use, again, Jack's Dead Bug Brew for that, spray down the entire plant, clean the plant, and I isolate it because isolate it because those populate and transfer to other plants very quickly. You want to make sure you're isolating the plant, washing the plant out, and watching it. So use that Jack's Dead Bug Brew once a week for like three or four weeks or five weeks. Continue use just as a preventative, whatever it takes. Now, spider mites, again, same concept as all the other pests. If you notice that your plant has having an issue with its new foliage, if you're uh, experiencing like leaf droppage or just weird discolorations that you know is not an overwatering issue or an underwatering issue because those leaves kind of look the same or a nutrition issue, maybe I'll go, I have leaves actually that kind of explain what is watering and what is not pest. So pause. So I pulled a few leaves <laughs> off of my pothos and just to clarify like what's not a pest because if you are seeing things like this and you think it's a pest and you're treating it for a pest but you don't see the pest and it's like continuing then it's a watering or nutrition issue. So this is a dead leaf and actually it's not an overwatering leaf it's an underwatering leaf. Fun fact they can look the same, but I know I've underwatered this plant, so I know what this is. This is a nutritional issue. See how it's brown and decaying around the edges? So something in the water either it doesn't like or it's not getting enough of, that's that issue. But again, it's like a solid yellow. It doesn't have any discoloration besides from the brown, but you can also tell that the brown is very like uniform. It's around the edges of the leaf versus if you looked at my thrips issue, it was kind of in random spots. It was on the edges of the leaves, but it wasn't like in the middle. It's not coming from the middle like that. And it's in the middle of the actual like leaf there. It's not on the edges. Again, it's, it's just a different, it's a different look. And then this also is a watering issue. I know that this is a watering issue. Um, and so you can see like they're really brown spots. That's, that's the leaf dying and decaying and then the yellowing coming up. So it's good. It would turn like this. So those, these are, these are watering issues. These leaves right here are pest issues. So see, there is a difference. Your leaf could make it a while for thrips um, and not die off like this. You would just notice that it's getting discolored like that. So again, watering, nutrition issue, 
grips issue. And they can be really difficult to tell if you're not, um, you know, fond, not fond, if you're not familiar with your plants or what its needs are, or not familiar with plants in general, and this is your first time, it's very difficult to tell what is pest and what is not. Also, it's hard to tell because this, like I thought this was a pest until I figured out what it was. And so you could be treating your plant and this could still be happening and you're wondering like, what the heck is that? I would do your research and figure it out. It could just be, a, you know, specific to that plant. I have seen House Plants Plus. She also shared it, which made me feel better. Hers had this and she asked an expert and he said the same thing. This is not a pest issue. So it can be very difficult. Browning edges don't mean that there's a pest. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. If you see your plant, it's like leaking water or it is uh, have water. It has water droplets on the leaves. That's not always a pest problem. I forgot to mention that mealybugs leave behind a sappy like substance all along your leaf. So if you're looking at your leaf and you see like these little roadways that are like going everywhere and it's like this you know, clear gunk, that's mealybugs. But if you see that on your plant's leaves, like on the top of them, and it looks like the pores of your plant are s crying, really, that's, um, you take my pronouncing terrible words today. I'll put the thing here. Um, that's just your plant getting rid of excess water. So that could be a watering issue. There are things that make it difficult to figure out pest or not pest. So safe bet, if you're unsure, treat it for the pest. If you notice that the problem is still persisting after you've been treating it, then you know like, okay, I need to look at my watering. I need to look at my light. I need to figure out what else humidity, if you're seeing a lot of browning and whatnot, like all of that stuff comes into play with what your leaves look like. And so you need to look at that after you've kind of solidified like, yeah, this isn't a pest issue. Also, I wanted to mention because something that can also look like a pest that isn't is fungicide. So um, you can get spray. You can get spray that will kill like blight, black spots, powdery mildew, downy mildew. Don't know what downy mildew is, but you can buy spray. Sprite. You can buy spray that is good for fungus because fungus can kill your leaves and make it look like a pest has been attacking them, or it can make it look like you have a watering issue and it really be like blight. Now I've never dealt with blight or a fungus issue, but I have seen videos of it and it can, it can look like a dead decaying leaf and you think, okay, it's not a pest. It's not a watering issue. So what is it? It could be a fungus issue. And so there are sprays on the market and things that you can um, use against that. That's a lot. And I'm gonna make sure to link all these products that I use. So mosquito bits, netting, and the sprays in the description below in case you're interested in getting it. I hope that you don't have to deal with any of those. But at the end of the day, these are plants that are meant to be outside that do have pests attached to it that you bring inside and it happens. There will come a time where your plant will have a pest, whether it's fungus gnats, grips, mealybugs, spider mites, whatever, it will happen. It's just part of owning plants. So it would be best serve you to figure out what you need to do in those situations before it happens. Let me know your comments about what pests you've dealt with or what you've done to eradicate them. This is such a interesting topic because I, I don't know that so many people have their different things again with the like cinnamon and the alcohol for fungus gnats that I just haven't experienced had any like luck with um to the systematic granules to the sprays there's so many things you could do so do your research if you find yourself in this situation and apply to it what you will or you know make your choice of what you want to do and really i'm my number one is like mosquito bits if you have fungus gnats or whatever just get this like it's so helpful you can use this outside too let me know in the comments what you do to eradicate your pests issue or if you have any tips or tricks or questions on what to do. I'd be interested to hear. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hope this helped you and hope you enjoy your spring. See you next time.